What's up, guys? I'm Coach Courtney, and I'm here with Coach Alex. Are you tired of not being in control of your life? In today's episode, we talk about how that can change. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with a friend, and we'll catch you on the inside. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Coach Courtney in town, and I have something special I want to share with you, is that when you got started in 2020, I was your biggest cheerleader of getting you on the team. When we were looking at the uh, individuals who were possibly going to work for us, I was dead set on you and was rooting for you in every single meeting that we had of getting to the decision of hiring you. And now, gosh, almost three years later, my decision was the best one. I mean, it's, it's evident. Sue's come around. Now she's just as big a fan as I am. And the thing that I knew from the jump, because when you came on, you hadn't coached yet or just had started. Mm -hmm. Okay. I knew two things about you is that you, your ability to connect with others was excellent. Your ability to communicate was excellent. And I knew that with those two things, those were things that we couldn't necessarily teach. Mm -hmm. I could teach you all the, the coaching things and work with you alongside clients and those different factors. But those two things are what make you a great coach as well as your ability within the intellectual side and your desire to learn, but your communication skills and your ability to connect are top tier. And so that's something that I wanted to share with you today because I've never shared that with you, mm -hmm. as well as I think that it it lends us well into today's episode um, where we're talking about you and your coaching and practices that you use within your clientele. So Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Quite the introduction. It is. No, I appreciate you saying that. And I tell this story to anyone who asks. Um, but I say second to getting engaged to my husband, uh, now husband, the call where you offered me the position to work for you was 100% the most excited I had ever been. Like I was just elated because it was a bit of a surprise and you knew my interest in coaching. You had worked with me for, at that point, um, going on almost two years. Um, and I was so honored and so excited and not even knowing exactly what I was stepping into, but feeling um, right about taking the step and fast forward. And now I've completely changed my career and um, feel grateful every day to do this work because um, like I cry happy tears all the time, <laughs> like working with clients, reading their responses, the impact this work can have is what I experienced firsthand from working with you. It was life-changing for me in more ways than one continues to be. And to have the opportunity to do that for work is something that I don't take lightly. So I can't thank you enough for being my fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't thank you for, uh, I guess, fulfilling what I was saying was going to happen. And I'm, I'm just very grateful for you. And I know that your clients are very grateful for you and the connection that you make with them. And I would love for you to let everyone know of just your passion for that connection with each and every client that you, that you have. Yeah. I definitely am constantly striving to be the best for my clients. They deserve that. And I want to give them everything <laughs> that they deserve. And I want to help them realize their potential. So I'm always thinking of ways to try new things or do something differently to elevate what I'm bringing to the table and how I can walk alongside my clients. Everyone's different. And um, I was reflecting on who I am outside of coaching and how that currently does and also should show up in my coaching. And so I have learned over the past few years, I'm a very people-centered, heart-centered person. Um, I just feel things. I am a little bit more of an emotional human. <laughs> um, and that does not mean I'm extroverted, though I'm very much an introvert. But I am most energized by conversations where I can sit down and talk about the real stuff. Like whether you're my friend, my family, my coworker, I feel like a collective allegiance and safety and this mutual trust when we can get in and, and have a conversation about what you're working really hard on, what you're insecure about, 
what you're so proud of, like what you're happy about. Those things bring me so much joy. And by being introverted, I usually need time alone to recuperate and just to restore my energy. But when I get in a conversation like that, I I leave the conversation more energized than before. And so that safe environment, that mutual trust is something I cherish. And I realized I want to create this space with my clients. I want every single client to feel comfortable sharing with me their earnest needs and concerns and fears, and also creating a space where I can comfortably um, ask them questions and encourage them to reflect inward on what it, their mindsets are or have been and how we can actually make change for them. What are some of the first steps that you take to create that safe space? Like, what are you doing with your client so that they have that feeling of safety? Because that is something that when I get a uh, some feedback from your clients, that's one thing that they do speak to is that they just feel so comfortable working with you and they feel like they align so well with you and, and feel like you're you really hear them when you're working with them and, and really getting to the bottom of what they have going on. So how do you go about creating that safe space to where they f- they feel like they can share? I think it starts with letting them know I'm just human. <laughs> and I'm obviously not someone who has this huge following on social. Um, I'm not an influencer or that status by any um, stretch of the imagination. But just sending them like authentic messages when they're first getting onboarded. Um, I have a practice where I like to just hop on my phone, selfie style, and send them a quick video or a little loom, like introducing myself. Um, I usually don't look completely perfectly put together, um, but just being like, hey, like I'm Courtney. It's so great to meet you. Um, And I'm so honored to be part of this big step because I know exactly what it feels like to have that phone call and hang up the phone after making commitment and be like, I'm doing it. (laughs) Because I remember my conversation with you. (laughs) I was in a parking garage. I know exactly what I was wearing. I remember being nervous. I remember wondering what you were thinking of me (laughs) on the phone. I remember being so prepared for that conversation (laughs) and knowing what I wanted to share with you and my passion and my goals. So I empathize so easily with who and how those people, my new clients are feeling when they come on. And I want them immediately to know. And I tell all of my clients in my first conversation with them, hey, this is a relationship. This is not a dictatorship. Your honest feedback, whether that's you expressing a need, a concern, a fear, if I make a mistake, I'm going to, I'm only human, like call me out on those things. If you have an idea based off of an initial recommendation from for me, I want to hear that. I want to work together to put something in place that genuinely works for you. And so I just ask from the get-go, please be honest with me. Please know that I am only human and let's build on this relationship together um, from this day forward. Excellent. I love that. And and I, I love your passion for coaching because that is something we like we have in common because I love my job every single day being at a a place where I'm closing in on a year of doing it. I think that more often than not, people find themselves in a situation that when they get to this point in, in a career path, they're getting a little bit burnt out or things of that nature. And I feel like my fire for coaching is just as strong as it was when I first started. And I feel as though that you carry that same passion. And so from a coaching standpoint, how would you outline things from a, like, what are we supposed to do? What are we meant to do when working alongside the client? Yeah. Well, I love to hear that. And that's so evident in um, how hard you show up every single day. Um, I would say my love for my clients truly continues to deepen as I mature as a coach. But what that looks like is not me being um, nonchalant about their progress or passive or a pushover or anything like that, I would argue that my heart for my clients shows up as me holding high expectations for them and refusing to just give cookie cutter answers or protocols because that's not going to get them the autonomy they're seeking. And I think that it's our job as coaches to help people build the skills and the knowledge and the self-awareness to be able to navigate not only their health and fitness, but their life at a more macro level through the sort of skills and ownership we help them take 
over their life. Um, I think that's what they come to us for. And frankly, if we were just cheerleading, like if we were only saying positive things and not focusing on what needed work or maybe where there was a mistake made, or if we were always immediately fixing problems or telling clients exactly what to do, like spoon feeding them answers, we would not be setting them up for success. I think we have to help clients learn how to take initiative, how to experiment, how to do some trial and anticipate a little error because that's part of the process, and how to not be shaken when things don't go perfectly according to plan because that's life. It's messy, and we're here to help you learn how to respond when things don't always go your way and how to weave in priorities you care about in a way that's sustainable and that's like in real life. Um, Because if we create this like very sterile environment where we have perfection that we're trying to achieve and every single day we have to check the box and if we don't we communicate that that's you know a failure and a lost week or a washed week that's not true first of all but it also isn't teaching people how to weave in important components of nutrition and fitness in a way that they can literally truthfully carry on for the rest of their life and that's our goal I think that when a coach goes the route of just being a cheerleader and being rah-rah with every check-in response and not really giving them the tools to press forward on their own, it's just taking the client for however long you have an opportunity to work with them and then just passing them to the next coach because they're not in a place to be able to take control of their own life, of their own health. And like you said, that is our entire goal. And I think that we can give people a framework today of really how you work with your clients for them to own their life, to own their health and be in the driver's seat and not feel as though that they have to, yes, you can always use us as a resource. You can always use uh, social media as a resource, but really to, to its core, being in a place where they can manage things themselves and feel confident in the, the decisions that they're making around their training and their nutrition. And that's a really powerful place to put the client. And that's, again, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just hyping Courtney up this whole episode because I think that's something you do a great job of. So <laughs> with, with today's episode and the main topic that I really want to get to is how you lead the client to get to that place of real leadership within their own life. Yeah. So there is a quote that I love and I heard it pretty recently, but it really stuck with me. And it's by Jocko Willink. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He's a retired U.S. Navy SEAL officer. And his quote is, Leaders must own everything in their world. There is no one else to blame. So basically that um, communicates you have to take charge of your life or the world will do it for you. The world will find a million ways to fill your time. I believe that. And um, I think that it happens to the best of us. Sometimes things in life happen that are outside of our control. We didn't see something coming or we had no say in the matter. And if we're not careful... In the broader scope of life and even with health and fitness, we can fall into this place of pointing outside ourselves for the reason why we're unhappy or the reason why we feel stuck or dissatisfied with our work or our finances or our free time or our social life. And if we're always pointing outside ourselves, I think we forget to ask ourselves the question, what can I do about this now? Because we always have a choice in how we respond to something to grow or learn from that experience. And so ultimately, I think becoming a little bit more proactive goes so far, not only in relation to nutrition or fitness goals, but in broader life. The key is becoming more proactive. And so to me, there are like two steps that you can take if you're listening to this and you're like, that sounds great, Courtney, but I'm not sure how. Like I have a super demanding job and I have a family and and other things. Like I wear so many hats. How can I become proactive? I feel like I'm barely hanging on um, each day. <clears throat> so the first thing that um, I would suggest, and this is coming from personal experience actually, I um, ended up working with a dear friend of mine who I had as a leader in my corporate job um, before I made my career change. And she is pursuing her master's degree and doing um, like leadership coaching and organizational change. And she, for part of her curriculum, was working with individuals who were in leadership positions in various careers. So I had the privilege of working with her. And in our time together, 
one of the first tasks she gave me was to try and articulate like the ideal state of my life and my ideal version of myself. And she assigned me the task of creating a vision board, which I had heard of people doing, obviously, but just shrugged it off. And I always thought I had better things to do with my time. But when she gave me the task, I was actually so excited about it. And it ended up being powerful because I let my creativity roam free. And to try and articulate verbally but also visually like what my ideal life would look like I ended up going to like two separate influencers which I almost hate saying but I I don't think I should feel embarrassed for that because they're just people whose personalities I had been like intrigued by or felt energized by and their lifestyle and certain components of what they prioritized and how they were showing up and how they were making an impact really attracted me. So I ended up pulling like visuals and things from their different content to create this little collage. And in doing this exercise, it helped me articulate like who I want to be, so what my work week looks like, how I'm spending my Friday nights, how I'm spending my Saturday mornings, like, you know, the the way I want to look, the way I want to dress, just it created some clarity where I had I hadn't any prior. And that was really powerful for me. And the other component that was really moving was my leader who was coaching me through this helped me realize that some components of this like ideal future state life that I had in mind didn't have to come later. Like I was waiting for other things to be settled or that's what I was telling myself, but that wasn't necessary. And so that was emotional for me to be able to realize like there's so much of this life that I can and should be devoting time toward now. So that's step one, articulating what my real values are and how that shows up day to day in my life and how I want that to become part of my life um, in real time. So that's step one. Step two is to use some of that new insight and to make a plan, which may be confusing at first, but I will elaborate. Um, This is another (laughs) practice I learned in corporate America. So if you're listening and you work in that space, you may roll your eyes for a second. But this helped me in the broader context of life versus just work. It's something called a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And I enjoyed this very much coming off of my vision board creation because I had some specific goals in mind. Um, And so when you're creating a 30, 60, 90 day plan, you create or you simplify the few categories that are your main priorities that you want to be moving the needle forward in. So when I did this, I had a more narrow scope and I was thinking about my job. And so I focused, for example, one of my categories was content creation. And so you take your categories, you name two or three, that's more than enough to focus on, and then you brain dump and you write down the specific actions you want to complete over the course of 30 days, like the next 30 days, then maybe how you want to build on them in that second month, those 60 days, and then again in that third month, those 90 days. So it's a it's a thought exercise. It might get a little messy before it gets clean. You might need a couple drafts. But it was really powerful for me because, again, I took some things that were a bit vague um, and a little more lofty in my mind and first articulated them in my vision board and then took them even more deep to figure out what is the action I can take on a daily or weekly basis immediately to help me start moving toward that goal. And so um, to give one example, I had said in the scope of my job here, one of my priorities was content creation. So in my 30-day bucket, I had written post two to three times and improve my editing skills. And so it was specific and measurable and something I thought was realistic to work toward um, with everything else going on. And then I expanded on that and built it out to three or four times for that 60-day time frame, et cetera. So I think you get the point, but doing this can be really clarifying as well. And then it's no matter um, a question of like, will I hit my goal? It's just a matter of, will I do what I say I'm going to do? Like, will I live with integrity to my goals? Because it's just a matter of waking up and doing the thing. And I will say the last point is, this is meant to be a working document because you're going to have a plan and I bet you millions of dollars that you're not going to be able to achieve your initial draft and that some things are going to need to be edited. So like get back in there, move things around. That's the beauty of it. And you can continue to do it every three, six, nine months to help you keep moving forward with intention. I think the main thing to really take from what you just said is that 
in order to achieve anything, you just can't move aimlessly. And I think that that's really the first step that people make when they get on the call to potentially work with yourself or myself or any fitness coach in general, where they they have to get that in place to kind of kickstart things to actually have the plan. And so part of that vision board for someone who's maybe applying this to their health and fitness is going to have your face plastered on it to say, I want to work with Courtney <laughs> or whatever that situation may be. Right. And so I think that the, the big thing here is giving yourself things to to drive towards goals to be had, as well as creating a timeline or or kind of checkpoints, if you will, that are getting you to the the greater goal. And what would you say with with content creation being a part of it, what was on the vision board that was in alignment with that 30, 60, 90 day plan? Like what was the bigger goal? That's a good question. So nothing specifically tied to my goal of improving my content creation, but both of the people who I was drawing inspiration from have a certain presence online. And to me, I wanted to, I knew that practice would get me to that place. So to be more specific, both of these women show up, I think, very authentically, um, and they have just like a joyful spirit, and it doesn't seem like they're trying too hard to be something that they're not. And they are playful, and they're colorful, and I I know who I am, and I know how different it is to try and show up on social to be a, an authority and like, you know, educate. Um, we all have like an Instagram voice. And so <laughs> part of something I'm working on is wanting to find that true authentic voice of who I am and like my kind of goofy um, self, but also while communicating efficiently the info that I want in an engaging way, because the goal is to help more people learn and to help more people um, expand their knowledge and to hopefully come to me as a resource um, so that they can take steps to become more in control. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. When it comes to setting the goals, what are some of the parameters that you put into place when you're talking to your clients to ensure that it is the most efficient and effective way to reach the goals that they have? That's such an important question. And one of the first things I tell clients is that it's very important to know that your goals will probably evolve and change over time. And setting that realistic expectation is critical. One of the easiest ways to feel discouraged or to set yourself up for um, being dissatisfied with your progress is not having a realistic expectation. And so when it comes to being more realistic about the time frame and how much progress will be achieved over what span of time, it's really important to remember that most big goals, big goals, take years to complete. So yes, when it comes to fitness, we see this day in and day out, and we preach this in a lot of content. To get to some big dramatic physique change, it's going to take days, weeks, months, years of dedicated effort of doing what you may think is boring or the mundane work. Um, you may get frustrated. You may feel less motivated someday. But most of the people that you deem successful, that I deem successful nowadays, have spent so many years with their nose to the ground doing the work day in and out, even if it's a bit mundane, even if it's a bit ordinary. And so when you have a big goal in mind, go in knowing that every day matters and that you can move the needle a little bit every single day, but that it's not going to happen overnight and nothing dramatic will happen in a year's time for most people. More than likely, it'll be three, four, five years. So would you say, what are some of the unrealistic goals that your clients come to you saying like, I want to do this in this amount of time? And then what are some of the more realistic goals that you provide them of like, hey, this is probably in better pursuit for. So give us some examples. You can kind of go into the the client 
like the um, attributes of them, mother of two who works a full-time job, giving kind of a little bit of a background to go alongside it because that matters, right? Of course. So give us a two or three examples, I suppose. Sure. So one's coming to mind. Um, I have a client who had, and she is not unique in this experience. She had been wanting to lose body fat, reduce weight, reduce body fat percentage for many years. And she is in her early 30s. And she had tried so many different diets, like the name diets, the name brand, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, who knows what, um, juice cleanses, detoxes, <clears throat> eating extremely low calorie, you know, 800 calories a day, things like that. And was just the epitome of like the yo-yo dieter. Um, and of course felt horrible through the process and would maybe see some results, but was at a point when she came to me where she was, you know, near the heaviest she'd been, feeling so frustrated, sleeping terribly, having irregular digestion, her skin was breaking out, you know, having severe premenstrual syndromes, just like not feeling good and her body clearly wasn't happy. And she came to me being like, I want to lose 20 pounds as soon as possible. And she's a perfect example of someone who I had to explain this. The, the reality is your body is not going to be responsive to an energy deficit immediately. There is so much variation in your day-to-day -day routine and how you're nourishing your body and how you're resting and how you're recovering and how you're training that if we were to enter an energy deficit, it's very unlikely that you would feel good, first of all, and that you would actually see you know, positive trends on the scale. What we have to do first is spend what I like to call the primer phase, um, this period of time, and in her situation, it needed to be probably 12 to 24 weeks of really establishing better habits and bringing stress down from her body, increasing food, understanding what her true calorie maintenance was, and then getting consistent at that intake instead of this huge, you know, overeating some days, undereating many others, increasing sleep and staying consistent with that, finding ways to mitigate life stress and finding ways to move that were not, you know, stress inducing um, to give her body the time to reset. And so um, I had to be frank with her and say, we are not even going to touch the attempt at a, an energy deficit, a calorie deficit, a dieting phase until we have awesome consistency where I'm seeing with your data and with your adherence to plan um, positive changes in your um, habits. Now, the cool thing is you're going to feel better immediately as we start making these changes. And this scale may actually drop because we may lower inflammation. You may be eating well above your maintenance, even though some days you well overeat and some days you or you overeat and undereat. Um, so establishing this consistency in every um, sense of the word is going to make your body a lot happier internally. You're probably going to start seeing positive changes. Clothes may fit a little different. Your skin may clear up. You won't feel as bloated. You won't have stomach pain. Your energy will improve. Your sleep will improve. Your strength will improve. Things will be better almost immediately. And it will then feel right when the time comes to consider a dieting phase um, because we'll know your body is likely more responsive. I know that was just one example, but I feel like I gave great detail. It's a, it's a good one. I, I think that shifting the focus away from the scale and it being something that's much more habit driven and about their entire life is the best move possible for that person because everything that she had done previously was just centered around losing this amount of weight and using this technique for this period of time and you're gonna lose all the body fat that you ever had type mentality. And you were able to shift her out of that to the thing that actually matters significantly more within her overall health mm -hmm. and longevity of her maintaining that health. And so <clears throat> it was perfect. Yeah, it's a, it's a great example. And so, uh, what was the, so that was the example in which, uh, it was too lofty and we pivoted. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess you also provided the other example cause it was like you gave the <laughs> alternative. Right. Do you have another one that would be, cause I, I've got some with, with my clients that, um, I've got a handful of examples that come to mind, but do you have another one that would be different from weight loss, but maybe something, I don't know, anything else? Um, yes, I will share one more and then I would love to hear one or two of your examples. I had a client earlier, um, in 2022 
who had Crohn's. And she was someone who was well-versed when it came to weight training and nutrition. And she was a coach herself, actually, like quite well-versed. And um, she had been into weightlifting and tracking macros and was trying to be relatively lean, um, but had a very unfortunate season. I think it spanned years where she was getting sick um, because of her Crohn's. And she ended up being in the hospital for prolonged stays and it was a very scary time. And so she came to me after this and she had been out of the hospital and she was like, look, Courtney, I just want to stay healthy and I want to improve my physique. I want to be able to build some muscle. Um, but just, you know, she knew that true muscle growth takes six, 12 plus months of being in a dedicated maintenance or surplus. And um, she wasn't naive to that. And she was like, I just want to stay healthy. And I think that there are some small things we can do to help me feel better because there are still a lot of digestive issues that I have. I feel very tired all the time and I, I want to make progress, but um, just feel good while doing it. So she came in with what I think is a really fantastic mindset. And um, it was just a matter of, I think like three months in that span of time, we really honed in on her fiber intake because that was something she had been overlooking as well as her um, recovery time. So her rest days from training and the quality and quantity of her sleep. And these two things, as I think a lot of people um, assume, you know, may feel small or it's okay if I kind of slack on those fronts when in reality, especially for someone with a digestive condition, can carry so much weight and make the world of a difference. And so in just a few weeks by making changes, um, and she was very adherent, we saw phenomenal change in how how much energy she had, um, which therefore improved her training sessions. So she, her strength rose very quickly. She was able to add, even in the three months we spent together, um, noticeable muscle tissue. She stayed very lean and her digestion improved dramatically. And um, in some of the just reflections she shared with me after discontinuing, she said it is arguably the best she'd felt in five years. And like that <laughs> is the coolest feedback ever, especially from someone like we all know things as coaches, but it helps so much to just have an objective eye in your corner because it's easy to miss something. So she came in with the right expectation and, um, and I think we were able to get her where she wanted to be. Absolutely. So the first example that came to my head was the client who comes to me wanting to, they've got <clears throat> digestive issues going on. So they've got like a GI map that needs to be assessed. They also have some things going on from a hormonal function. Maybe they've lost their menstrual cycle. And so they're wanting to address both of those things simultaneously, as well as, and I know that some of the clients who I'm referring to in this moment are listening to this very <laughs> podcast and laughing right now, um, who also want to add muscle tissue and want to lose body fat. And we want to do that at the same time because those things can be done simultaneously. Of course. <laughs> it's been proven over time. Time and time again, people just show that all those things can get corrected. Five goals, one time. <laughs> yeah. So that is one where we've got to pick the most important, knock that one out, and then get to the next priority. And some of them are going to have a application to one another. The digestive stress is going to have some application to the hormonal function and the lack of ability to add muscle tissue is going to have an impact from that hormonal function as well. And so there's going to be some overlap, but you're not going to necessarily do both or you know, two of those five things simultaneously, you're going to have to prioritize and conquer. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big thing that I try to drive home with that um, individual. The other, and, and this is kind of also in alignment, is the person who wants to lose body fat and gain muscle simultaneously. I feel, I feel like that's a lot of our inquiries of we want to grow massive glutes, but we also want to get lean while doing that at the same time. And that is another one where there's a special demographic of people that can do that. Uh, some newer trainees, people who have taken some time off from training, that's possible. But for the vast majority of people, we've got to pick one and, and decide to uh, get after it. Because if you go the route of maybe having an intake that's a little bit below maintenance to try and have the fat loss, but also have near enough calories to make muscle gain happen. It's going to be very slow, but you're going to be getting kind of like a 50% of what you could get or 40% of what you could get for both. Whereas if you just had a specific goal, you could be getting a hundred percent of the one thing that we're trying to do. And then 
pivot out of that and get 100% of the other thing. And so having that conversation, I think the biggest thing when we have expectations out of alignment for goals is just having that conversation, not shooting down the goals themselves, but having the conversation as to why the, the goal that they have is not necessarily attainable in the time frame that they want or in the fashion that they desire, having that conversation, going back and forth and allowing for them to see even though that's not going to work the way that you want it to, I have a plan here that's going to get those things accomplished just over a longer duration of time, and we're going to have much better success doing it. And that's where we get a lot of the buy-in with our clients of just having that conversation in detail of understanding of like, we hear you, but this is really because of our, our of our knowledge, of our experience, we know that this is going to be the best way for you to pursue those things individually. And so I think that having that conversation is is huge. Absolutely. And that makes me think of something that Sue has said to me before that I know she shares with clients. Um, it's this statement that I will get you to your goal, but it just might look a little different than you initially envisioned. And I think what helps so much with that is laying out a roadmap um, for our clients at the very beginning and obviously disclaiming that this is sort of like a, a templated roadmap. Um, so things will change here based on your adherence the things that happen in your life, your specific preferences and goals, but just so you have an accurate, realistic expectation of the necessary steps that we're going to have to take to get you to your goal while caring for your overall health. Because again, we want to teach people the skills and the knowledge to navigate life. We don't want to just throw in some drastic measure or a quick fix that clients don't understand and feel helpless without us in the picture in terms of navigating that kind of thing moving forward. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Let's let's hone in on expectations. So when we're when we're creating the goal, what is your what is your thought process as you're you're framing this for the client? Like how are you going about this to maybe what are you taking into consideration? And then how are you aligning to um, like super realistic, semi-realistic, but not as realistic as the other option? How are you kind of going through that? Well, of course we have to take into consideration the stressors in that client's life and the hats that they wear. Some, a lot of my clients specifically are um, single or not married. And so they are focused on their career. They are focused on maybe a relationship that is blossoming. I have several people who are going to be getting married soon, um, but they're, you know, kind of operating as an individual, a single person. Um, and so maybe they have ambitious career pursuits and they're allowing job to take priority number one. Maybe there's someone who needs to be um, caring for a family member. I've had that in the past as well. And so knowing the other true priorities and getting that out of my clients is really important from the get-go because we need to make sure the processes we're putting in place actually align with your values. And a lot of times people don't totally know what their values are and like, again, what they want and what they are aspiring for. That's why doing the vision board exercise and creating that 30, 60, 90 day plan is so helpful because it's easy to get distracted by all the things around us. So articulating what I really care about and in this immediate season, this month, slash this quarter, what are the few things I'm going to intentionally, consistently keep up here and show up for, you know, as often as I can, even if it's not perfect. So understanding each client's main values and having conversations with them is important because then if they have a week where work got crazy and they had late nights and early mornings and they missed some training sessions or they weren't able to adhere as closely to their nutrition goals, then it's just a simple acknowledgement of, hey, you told me from day one, your job is going to be the number one priority and that your fitness and coaching is going to be number two. And of course, that's still very high and we're going to make phenomenal progress, but it's okay and you don't need to beat yourself up if you allow job to remain <laughs> priority number one. That's what you planned for. Um, so just having those honest conversations um, can be really helpful along the way. How do you go about helping your client who is unaware of their values or is unaware of their priorities? How do you go about showing them this, this is this is what you're showing through your actions or what have you, that this is how you rank your priorities? 
I love asking questions. And so I have done some trainings um, from like psychologists who have their PhD in psychology. I've learned about self-sabotage and how as humans, we have these tendencies very naturally, but it's all just a mindset. They're all just like thought patterns that we can rewire and we can um, fix or change with reflection. So a lot of times if I acknowledge something, um, I will ask a, a client, say, you know, it sounds like you're saying X, Y, and Z, basically restating something they've shared with me. But I also know you've told me your goal is A and B. When you think about these things together, how is X inhibiting your goal of A? <laughs> and um, the next time you're in the situation, How might you choose to act differently? And so I always tell my clients, nothing is a failure if you learn from it. In fact, I think failure, I know this is a bit of a cliche, but failure helps you gain because when you fail something, you you realize, fail at something, you realize an opportunity area. So to me, failure is clarity. (laughs) I also think failure keeps us humble. So um, if you hit a place where there's a mistake made or um, a bump in the road, Take it in stride. Don't feel shame. Don't dwell on that. Just acknowledge what you've learned and how you're going to choose to act differently based on you know your priorities. So just pausing, stepping back, kind of objectively viewing the situation, and then realigning yourself with, well, I do want this to be my priority. So if this happens again, how can I make that visible? How can I bring that to life? I like that. I think that one thing that I try to do when we're trying to identify the priorities for a client or or trying to really get in alignment so that their expectation is is matching their effort. I think one of the things that I really outline is wherever you're pouring your time is the priority that you have. So mm-hmm. if you're spending a bunch of time scrolling social media with no intent of like you're running a business, you're doing something with a a goal of consuming this, um, I guess, content, then you're that's a priority to you, but it's not really a good priority for you to have, or you're watching two hours of Netflix every day. That's a priority. Obviously you're taking a, a portion of your day to do that, but it's, it's not really what you want to have as a priority. And so being that blunt and really just going through their day of this is what you're showing yourself as is your priority and how we can change that and move some things out to make time available for what is really important to them, their health, their nutrition or whatever it is. Because I was, I just recently had a, uh, an inquiring client who was saying like the allotment of time for, for her cardio and for her training was just not possible. And so this is not even someone who's paying me to do this, which is, you know, another conversation to be had, but going through that with her of just pulling out and then plugging things back in and be like, yo, you do have the time. It's literally just a matter of you actually doing what you say you're doing rather than just telling everyone that you, you're you trying to do this thing when you're in reality not actually doing it. And so being that honest with yourself is a challenge, but it's, it's, re- it's liberating to be that honest with yourself because you realize that you're the only one that's actually in your way rather than it being what we talked about at the beginning of just pointing your finger at, at someone or something else. Mm-hmm. I think that reminds reminds me of something that we've talked a lot about as a coaching staff of um, doing like time audits. So you wouldn't believe how fascinating and enlightening it will be to time yourself doing tasks each day and um, to truly take audit of exactly how long you spent doing each task, as little as getting ready in the morning to doing a certain type of work, to making a meal, to eating a meal, to cleaning up from a meal. Um, It can really show you where your time is being spent and help you reallocate towards the things that matter most. The time study for me was (laughs) eye-opening. It really showed me because, so I use a a notebook and I track my hours when I'm working, but I kind of cheat. Like when, when I, when I say I'm cheating is that I will start the clock and then I'll go to the bathroom and I'll pause it. And then when I come back, I'll forget to, um, unpause it. And so then I do a couple of things. I'm like, oh, should I still had 
35 minutes on the clock. So then I start it when in reality, I should have just probably called it that that was my full hour of mm-hmm, work. Mm-hmm. And I do that to myself way too often because I, I have this standard of what I should be doing in the hour. And so then I just always uphold myself to that and try to like finagle the rules basically to always fit into that con- constraint. And so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not working on this project for that long. And then I do a time, like a real time study. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm spending way more time on this than I thought I was. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a good eye opening uh, experience. And I think that for, for people who are really striving to do more and, and do better and all these things, it's something where you can, like the internal dialogue, you just kind of beat yourself up of, I've got all these things to do and I'm getting only a fraction of them done. And those are generally, myself included, the people who are not tracking their time at all or not accurately in, in more so in my case. And so the time study is liberating in that way where it makes things very honest of, oh, well, there's a reason I'm not getting this all done it's because I don't have the time to do so. I've got to either get more efficient with the things that I am doing, or I need to shrink the list of things that I plan to do. Yes. And so that is a a huge help. And I think that this whole, gosh, this whole episode is going to be such a help for everybody. And I think we're going to get so much out of it. Do you have any closing statements, um, things that you would like to still share with the audience? Sure. There's a couple okay. and I will reference my notes um, just because- they're important and I I don't want to convolute. So the first one is (laughs) just to remember that most people don't have everything figured out ever. Even the people who you think have their shit figured out. So So keep that in mind. And the reality is you'll probably have a couple things in life going pretty well, humming pretty nicely, and that's okay. And just make sure that those things that are getting the majority of your time are truly those that you care about most in that season. Uh, Again, I think failure keeps you humble. So it is good to have a slice of humble pie every once in a while and to swallow your pride. And remember ultimately that putting your people first and doing right by people is going to make a huge difference. And the way you do the small things is a direct reflection of the way you're doing the bigger things. And I think all of those play a role in you know, they shape the person you're becoming and the footprint you leave behind. So don't feel rushed or put unnecessary pressure on yourself um, or try to be someone you're not. Um, Just try to focus on doing the work that you care most about well, giving it your best each day, which doesn't mean it has to be perfect. Um, Expect mistakes. That's huge um, because when you expect that you're going to have a mistake at some point, you're going to be a little less thrown emotionally. And again, as an emotional person myself, I get it, but don't marry your highs or your lows. You're going to have both, but it's really important to remember that those moments don't define your value or your identity or your worth. So don't make huge decisions in either, you know, peak or valley. (laughs) Um, And then treating people well, always, and remembering that even if they don't explicitly acknowledge it, your growth, your adversity, your perseverance, your attitude through your journey, not, you know, once you reach your destination, but through it all um, is rubbing off on people and people are taking note and you're probably making an influence. Um, You're probably making a difference in someone's life. So keep that in mind because someone's always watching and um, it'd be great to know that if anything, you're creating a positive difference for someone. That was excellent. That was, that was good. Thanks. Those are very Im- important pieces. Do you want to let everyone know where they can find you on social? Um, this is my, gosh, this is my third interview on physique development podcast. I feel like this was probably my best of the three, to be honest with you. Um, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <And> well, <laughs> I don't know if I should say thank you, but thank you. <laughs> Great job, Alex. Uh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let the people know where they can find you. Yes. So I am on Instagram and TikTok, Courtney Reedy. That's K O R T N E Y R I E D Y Y. Thank you guys for listening. Have an awesome day. We appreciate you so much.